Here we go then, week three of our series in the Old Testament called The Reset. The discovery that when the people of God got powered down, when they faced their own lockdown, there was this wonderful opportunity for them to reset, for them to be reset in the mission and purpose of God in the world. And in that same way, this moment in our time, for all its difficulty and for all of its heartache, does give us an opportunity for God to reset us again in his and for his mission in the world, the reset. Honestly though, today, there's just one thing that I'd love you to know, either for the very first time, or to know it and receive it afresh with the same power and the same sense of amazement, I guess, as the first time. And it's this, God loves you, period. There's nothing that you can do to change that. There's no way you can go. There's no circumstance that you will face. There's nothing that you can do. There's not even anywhere the Bible says where you can hide. God loves you. And just like the people in Isaiah's day, it's easy for us in our current situation to have the same crisis that they were having. You see, they were having a crisis of confidence in the love of God. If God loved us, we wouldn't be here in Babylon. If God loved us, then we wouldn't be facing this global pandemic. If God loved us, he wouldn't seem so far away when we're in this foreign land. If God loved us, we wouldn't feel so alone. And so we can understand the crisis of confidence in God's love that the people in Isaiah's day were having, because I guess we can relate to it for ourselves. And that's why in this final little mini series within our bigger series in the book of Isaiah, we're going to see that God speaks to the people through Isaiah in five different ways to remind them that his love for them is constant, unchanging, unconditional, unwavering and unending. And in these five different ways, God invites through Isaiah the people back then to hear, to feel, to know, to see and to understand his love. And so today, as we look at these same verses, that same message comes to us. And my prayer for all of us is that we too will hear and feel and know and see and understand for ourselves that the God of heaven loves us deeper than perhaps we'll ever grasp this side of heaven. And that love is constant and totally dependable. So how did God speak that message through Isaiah? Well, first of five ways. One, firstly, God says, be confident in my love because I'm your good shepherd. Because I'm your good shepherd. I think it will really help actually if you get those verses up in front of you. Have Isaiah 49 uh, open in front of you on your phone, your tablet, your uh, uh, paper copy of the Bible, whatever you're using. Uh, get, get that open on your lap right, right now. Perhaps I'll just pause for a moment while you do that. I think that'll be really helpful. And I'll put all the verses on the screen to make sure that you can uh, follow along as we go and see those verses there for yourself. So we're in Isaiah chapter 49 and you can see in our verses from verse 8 following, very quickly God begins to say to the people, you can be confident of my love. Why? Because I'm your good shepherd. Verses 9 and 10. I'll protect you and I'll provide for you and I'll guide you because that's what a shepherd 
does. A Palestinian shepherd, of course, that would lead the sheep through dark and difficult times to greater, greener pastures. The shepherd that would guide the sheep through dark and difficult caverns and valleys to quiet and still waters. That's the image that God gives the people and says, never forget, that's what I'm like. I love you like a shepherd loves his sheep. And each of these five examples in Isaiah are reflected for us in the New Testament. And of course, you will know that Jesus himself talked about being the good shepherd. The sheep know my voice and I lead them out. I'm the good shepherd and I lay down my life for my friends. And so the invitation for us to hear and know the voice of the shepherd and so be confident in God's love for us. That's the first one. The second one, as it moves on, is uh, a different image. And each of these uh, five examples are kind of images and metaphors for us. And uh, uh, we see a few verses later when the Lord speaks through Isaiah and says, uh, how can I forget the baby that I've given birth to. Literally, how can I forget the baby that's at my breast? Just like a mother can't possibly forget a baby at her breast. So I have given you birth and I cannot possibly forget about you. And you'll notice if you're looking at the verses carefully, is that in between, on a couple of occasions, the people kind of answer God back, just like we would. And so look at the dialogue there with me in chapter 49. You see that the the Lord says, look, I'm your good shepherd. And then the people go in verse 14, but we always have a but, don't we? God says, I love you. And we go, but, and the people in Isaiah's day, they went, but, but, but you've forsaken us. You've forgotten about us. We're all the way in Babylon. It's like us saying, but but you've forgotten us. Look at the situation that we're in, God. Locked down and locked away, unable to see even our family and friends. You've forgotten about us, God. How can we know that you love us? And God says, I have given you birth. I could never, ever forget you. Just like a mother could never forget a baby at her breast. It's such a strong and powerful image isn't it that we are children of God and as a good father and mother would never forget their children so a a perfect heavenly father will never forget us and so we see that again mirrored in the New Testament Paul writes doesn't he to uh, the Romans and says God's Holy Spirit is in us testifying reminding us speaking to us that we are children of God And so we not only can hear the voice of the shepherd and therefore understand that God loves us, we can also feel the Holy Spirit and what it means to be his children and therefore know that we are loved by God. And so we've got these two pictures, but he doesn't end there. He wants to make absolutely certain that the people in Isaiah's day never ever look at the circumstances and interpret the circumstances as a sign that God has forgotten them or that he no longer loves them. And so he goes on to the third image, uh, the third metaphor, the third example. Uh, And he says, I have tattooed your names on the palms of my hands. Tattoos were very popular in ancient Babylon, perhaps just like they are today. And a special tattoo, I guess, if you like, is when the name of somebody or someone that really matters to you is tattooed on your body because a tattoo is permanent. It's a sign that their love, their devotion, their commitment to someone will never end. It's a permanent part of who they are. And so they engrave, they tattoo that person's name on their their hands or their arm or wherever it might uh, be. And God says, I've tattooed, I've engraved your name on the palm of my hand, not because I needed reminding, but just so that you might always know that I will never forget you, that this relationship is 
permanent. Unlike human relationships when sometimes people have names tattooed and then they move on, God says, I'm putting this in the palm of my hand as a guarantee, as a certainty that I will never, ever forget you, that I've chosen you. And then if you look at those verses, it bursts into a celebration of all that God will do in the future when he repowers up his people. Look at it from verse 16 right through to verse 23, the promise of restoration and the promise that there, the people, the place will be too small. God will do that same thing, something even bigger and better than there was before, a new normal or perhaps not just a new normal, but even a better normal is on its way in God's purposes. And like these others, we see them mirrored in the New Testament, don't we? Where can you uh, think of in the New Testament when there's a, a mark, a tattoo on the palm of someone's hand? Thomas said, I'll only believe if I see the scars the engraving on the palm of your hands. And Jesus said, look at my hands and my side. The marks of death that God chose never to erase. The marks, the signs, the engraving still in heaven of his love for you in Jesus giving his life. A permanent reminder in heaven that God's love for you is certain and un conditional. And so can you see that where the people are having this crisis of confidence in the love of God, God is speaking to them through the prophet Isaiah to rebuild their confidence that they should always know and never forget, whatever the circumstance, that God's love is reliable and dependable. And just like us, At this stage in their journey, the people raise another objection. But what if you can't, God? Notice the first objection was, what if uh, 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 you don't want to? You've already forgotten about us. This time they say, but but what if you're unable to? What if you can't? Can a, uh, can a, uh, uh, a champion rescue someone who's already in captivity? Are you able to do it, God? Look at this great power of Babylon. Are you big enough, God, to rescue us from their grip? God, do you really love us? And if you do, are you able to rescue us from the power of this pandemic? Is COVID, is our current situation too big for you, God? Too strong for you, God? And so God speaks right into that situation and says, do you know, my love is powerful enough to rescue you from every situation. I can rescue the captives. I can set people free. I will rescue those who are captive. My love is powerful enough. And again, we get a mirror in the New Testament Maybe a few different verses are coming to your mind right now. Verses about confidence in the love of God. Remember what Paul said, you know, I'm convinced that neither life nor death, neither lockdown nor coronavirus can separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing in the heavens and on the earth can separate me from the love of God of God. And slowly but surely, the people of God are having their confidence in God's love restored. And can you see why that's so important? Last week we talked about God saying to you and I that when he reboots his people, when he reboots his mission on earth, we as the people of God will be included, all of us together and each of us as individuals. We are all in. But just like in Isaiah's day, it's easy for us to go, not me. I'm not sure I'm in. I'm not sure God loves me that much. I'm not sure God really wants me on my team. Maybe he'll have that person or the other person, but maybe not me. And we have this same crisis in the confidence, in confidence, in the confidence of God's love and so he's building up this picture and then he brings it to a crescendo to a climax at the beginning of chapter 50 and he says look look at it this way there is no certificate of divorce 
There is no creditor. There is no uh, debt. I have not sold you to anybody. In other words, my promise of commitment to you has never, ever changed, has not been taken away. Great nations and rulers will come and go. Babylon will come and go. And Assyria will come and go. Coronavirus will come and it will go. This season too will pass. But the love of God, my promise to you, my commitment to you is unwavering. It is certain. You cannot see anywhere a record of my divorcing you, of me bringing an end to my promise. You cannot find anywhere any clue that my promises are anything but as true as they've always been. And again, a mirror in the New Testament when Paul says, do you know what? With God, all the promises are yes and amen. Why all of this? That today you might be certain of the love of God for you. That when God says we're all in, he really means it because he really loves you and there's nothing that you can do to change that you can fight it you can run away from it you can ignore it you can make excuses for it you can raise all kinds of objections about it but it will not change the fact that today God loves you and God spoke through the prophet Isaiah And he speaks again to us today that we might hear, that we might feel, that we might know, that we might see, that we might understand that he loves us. And that's my prayer for all of us today. Would you pray with me right where you are? A moment to settle your heart and your spirit, perhaps a moment just to get comfy where you are. And I want to pray that today you would know the love of God deeper and more real and more certain than you've ever known in your life. That as the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd, you would hear the voice of the Father calling your name. That just as the mother feels and therefore the baby feels deeply the presence of the mother in that intimacy of feeding at her breast, so we would feel the embrace of the Father today. And not only will we hear his voice of love and feel his presence of love, but we would know deep in our minds and in our hearts that he loves us because in heaven he has our names engraved on the palm of his hands. In heaven, there are still the marks of death, his death for you and me, that he chose never to erase as a constant, permanent reminder to us that his love is unending, unwavering, unrelenting. That we might hear and feel and know and see that we might see his love in the way that they would see in Isaiah's day God breaking into their situation and releasing them from Babylon that we in these days every day we would see his release and his rescue and we would see with our very eyes even through these days what it means to be rescued by God and ultimately in the weeks and months ahead we will see God at work rebooting up his people for his mission in the world and we will see the reality of the love of God and so will many others around that's the promise there in Isaiah and finally 
we would understand today deep in all of our beings his love for us because we might look around to try and find a reason why God's promises are no longer true why his love has been broken we're looking around for our equivalent of that certificate of divorce when God has said I'm out of here I don't care about them anymore and we just can't find it because all his promises are yes and amen so may you today where you are right now may you hear and feel and know and see and understand that God loves you period